Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today is day 15 of this 100 day vlog. I actually did miss one day, but I'm still pushing through. So we're not going to miss any more. I hope. <laughs> All right. So today is a tag video and the title of this tag is the not so new mom tag, but I'm sure that you've seen the title. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, family, so there are 10 questions to this not so new mom tag and I will be reading them off of my phone. So the very first question is, what are three qualities I want my child to possess? Uh, you know what? I want her to be smart. I want her to be kind and I absolutely want her to know who she is. And love herself I know that that was four but yeah I definitely want those qualities in my baby the second question or statement actually is my biggest fear of parenthood is or was and honestly I'm like most of the other parents out here I was thinking about the financial aspect can I actually take care of this other human being that I am bringing into the world and uh, am I being selfish or can I really take care of her so um, that was my biggest uh, fear, but I will say that I think that I'm doing a pretty good job. My fiance actually says that I'm doing a pretty good job. I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job. So it was a fear, but that has absolutely passed. Question three, one piece of advice you could give a new or expecting parents. You know what? Don't listen to everybody about their experiences with their first child or multiple children, etc. Because your child is going to be completely different than their child. And even if there are some similarities, there are still going to be some differences because your child is an individual. So do what you want to do. And remember that there is zero books on parenting. Maybe we, maybe in the next generations, the next century or so, somebody will actually come up with a, uh, a really good how to parent book. But as of right now, there are no books on parenting. And even if there are books on parenting, you still cannot go with 100% of what those books are telling you. You have to go with your gut feeling. If you feel that it is right for your child, then do it for your child or children. And again, just don't really pay attention to what everybody else is telling you that you should do. So for example, like, um, a lot of people was telling, um, not me specifically, but uh, one of my girlfriends, she nursed past one year and everybody was asking her, when you gonna stop, when you gonna stop, when you gonna stop? Well, uh, that ain't none of y'all damn business when she gonna stop. She gonna stop when she wants to stop nursing. Again, so just go along with the things that you feel are right for your child or children. You are the parents for a reason. So you were chosen, God chose you. So embrace it and just understand that there are no books on parenting anyway moving forward number four i believe infants toddlers should or should not be exposed to television on a regular basis why or why not uh for me i um she my daughter is exposed to television on a regular basis my girlfriend the very same one that i was just speaking to she is just now starting to let her child get into television on a regular basis her child is now 18 months um, my child is 17 months so they're really close but the point is you have to do what you do for your child television is not for every child i'm not saying that i um just sit her i'm not one of those parents that just sit her in front of the tv although i do feel that sometimes that i do do that um when i just need a break or i'm just like you know what i i, I can't parent today you know even though that sounds crazy but um sometimes i just need a break i need a break and i need to recharge and after a long day's worth of work and then i have to come home and still continuously work as in mom work uh, it could be overwhelming at times and a lot of people don't talk about that they're kind of like always want to be super mom or feel some somebody is trying to make them feel bad for taking a break and just taking a break from everything and that's including your children and sometimes you have to do that so try not to let people again instill their values in you I do let my child watch TV on a regular basis, but a lot of it, honestly, uh, for me, because I know that I do do that, she still gets um, 
uh, the educational shows. So a lot of what she watched, not that I need to explain to y'all, but a lot of what she watched is the educational. So like she, they're teaching her numbers, colors, shapes, uh, words. So it's it's a like it might have been um, I remember my mom saying that she sat us in front of the TV and we learned a lot of our stuff from Sesame Street. So again, it's educational. Oddly enough, she don't like Sesame Street. So I, I I do sit in front of the TV, but I do want her to be exposed to a lot of things that I'm not necessarily doing on a regular basis, such as teaching her the words. But if I am in the room, which is most of the time, I'm in the room with her while she's watching these educational programs. I'll say like the animal sounds we actually was just doing that not too long ago they were talking about different animals and I'm like eh, 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 that's a sheep and moo that's a cow and meow that's a cat so so I'm doing all of that with her but I will say initially it is via the television and oddly enough can you believe it she watches a lot of YouTube videos <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, oh my God, YouTube. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Okay, number five. Will the baby be on our schedule or will we be on the baby schedule or did that work out at all? Uh, for me, it, in the beginning, I was on the baby schedule. I, I did kind of listen to everybody else, which they always say, sleep when the baby sleeping, sleep when the baby sleeping. But uh, I got other things to do. I mean, you know, I did try to take heed to that, especially in the very beginning. I am a C-section mama, so I did take heed to that in the very beginning. But as time progressed, uh, no, I could not sleep when the baby was sleeping. I had to get up. I had to clean. I had to do laundry. I had to do all of my domestic duties because otherwise I don't have a maid. And um, I will say that I am honestly... <laughs> thinking about investing in that um, at least one to two times a month because it's just overwhelming. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, some other parents that didn't think about doing that, they might laugh at me. I don't care. <laughs> you like that? I mean, I just don't care. I got to do what I got to do for me in my household. And um, I've said this before. I still hand wash dishes, and it is just old. Okay? That's just very old. And uh, that really does take a lot of time out of me because I don't just wash the dishes as soon as they get dirty. I let them pile up over a couple days, and, of course, it takes me longer and blah 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 okay because that's how I feel about when people try to give me the advice on how I can keep the kitchen clean by just doing oh just wash them after each time you eat that I don't want to do that how about the next house that I get into we'll have a dishwasher that is non-negotiable I even told my fiance because he'd be getting on me about them dog and dishes and it's just too much I already told him that that I don't wash dishes every day I, I don't like when we first met if that's a deal breaker for you you need to go ahead and walk away but he still tried to say something about them dishes we're trying that's one of our things that we working through because he be like I know that his his love language is acts of service and definitely keeping up with the kitchen and the rest of the household is my way of showing love to him. It's not that I don't do it. I just don't do it every single day. Not the dishes. Now, the rest of the house might look clean, but those dishes might pile up. Okay? That's not what we was talking about, though, was it? <laughs> Going back to the question. <laughs> Um, yeah, so in the beginning, I was on her schedule. Now she's kind of on our schedule, and it's better now that she's 17 months. Uh, as far as her sleep schedule and everything and her eating, I'm kind of on top of all of that stuff. So I just kind of know. And now we're in the potty training stages and I'm not one of those moms that's going to do it over the weekend. No, I'm doing it for the long haul because I got a life and I don't want to be cleaning up pee and poop over a weekend. That's just not what I want to do. Some people have done that and their baby is potty trained. Well, I'm doing it the long haul. Okay. That's what I'm doing because that's what's working for me in my household. Anywho, number six. <laughs> Do you work or will you be returning to work? If so, when? So, yes, I do work and I already returned to work. Um, I didn't return to work till she was six months. And so that really worked out for me. Honestly, that was absolutely my prayer. And they really do say that prayer does work. And I believe the prayer does work because seriously, way before I even had a child, like my prayer was to stay home with my child for the first six months of my child's life. And now it happened to be my daughter and I stay home up until that six month and literally six months and I think two days I was back at work so I did I prayed about that long before I even had a child and it came to fruition so prayer does work moving on <laughs> number seven I need wait I need the time out with my friends weekly bi-weekly or monthly you see she cutting up now because she likes to be a part of these videos y'all um but for me as far as my friends go 
I'll take care of her in a second. But as far as my friends go, I like to try to see them every two weeks. But most of the time, it don't work out. Um, uh, it's usually monthly because now uh, <laughs> we're all starting to have children or uh, even my single friends, they basically are either working more or they are doing their own thing. So I normally see my friends monthly now, but I'm still making a point to see them. I still make it a point to at least try to talk to them or at least um, they have the app Marco, Pol Marco Polo and I'm doing a little bit better with Marco Polo. So we speak to each other that way and that way we can see each other per se, even though it's not a like an... Um, a FaceTime or a Skype is not right then and there. But those of you who are up on Marco Polo, you understand exactly what I'm saying. But the point is, I'm still making an effort to keep up with my friends and their lives as well, even though mine is constantly changing. So that's that. Number eight, how often do you and your significant other get to spend time together alone? That is few far and in between in this household. Uh, we do a lot of spending time together when she goes to sleep. But a lot of times, I mean, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm worn out from the day. And so I have to consciously make a decision to say, you know what, tonight I'm going to lose sleep and hang out with my boo while she's sleeping. But I will say I try to do that um, at least once during the week. Hold up. Actually, just to wrap up that question, um, me and my boo, we actually don't spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time together as of right now. The city that we actually live in, neither one of us have a lot of family around here and we don't always want to have to pay for someone to watch her so we do a lot of our spending one-on-one -on -one time together when she goes to sleep and we actually have at least one day a week one day a week which is usually Sundays where we spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time together mainly again when she sleep during her naps so that's our usual time but we, we were trying we actually were doing good in the very beginning of the year which is trying to have at least one date per month and um, that kind of has life is just constantly evolving and changing around here and so um, the month of March we actually did not have a date the month of April we're going to try to have a date so we really are trying to constantly keep those dates in there to keep the relationship fresh and a new because bringing children in I don't want him to feel like it's constantly all about Odar which is our daughter's name it so we do try to keep up with the dates and just last month it didn't happen but I know that the new experiences the exact same thing that I tell you guys the new experiences definitely count and they are something that we do try to keep up with so the month of April we will try to get a date in there okay number nine do you plan to have more children if so how many do you want uh, you know what this is a question that I will answer from um, previously and right now. So previously, I mean, when I was younger, I actually wanted three children. Um, currently I have one child and yes, I do want at least one more child. Um, he actually wants multiple children, more children. However, comma, <laughs> that probably ain't gonna happen because this year your girl will be 41 and uh, yes your girl started late having her children I'm actually very excited that I started late because I was able to do a lot of the traveling and doing and seeing things and my money stacked up because being on the job longer you know you get raises and stuff so I really am not like panicking about being able to take care of a child versus if I was younger I probably would have been panicking more and maybe even been in the system as far as welfare not knocking welfare honestly I wish I could have gotten on welfare but that's besides the point okay I ain't even trying I ain't even playing I wish I really could have went on welfare because tangent okay this is a tangent however the people on welfare don't have to spend their cash okay and I know a lot of that I'm on, a lot of people that are on welfare don't have a lot of cash however when you are not on welfare all of that cash is spent in the store on food and do you know how much food money you spend so my refrigerator be looking super bare and then somebody on welfare's refrigerator be stacked, packed. They might even have an extra freezer somewhere, a deep freezer that's packed up with food. And I'm like, okay, man, when we going to get paid again because I need some food around here. So yeah, definitely not knocking welfare. I grew up on welfare. Like my mom was on welfare. We got off after a while because she seen that we were embarrassed about being on welfare. Yes, I told you this was a tangent, but I'm just saying I'm not knocking welfare. Oh, I wish I could be on it, but I can't. So moving on from that <laughs> tangent. <laughs> but yeah, just to wrap up that question. Yes, I would love to have four children, at least one more. Again, my fiance wants multiple more children, but <sighs> anywho. 
Number 10, what is my favorite activity with my child? Right now, I just love playing with her. Like, we just laugh and joke. Both of us have this uh, giggly personality. And so I just love actually getting on the floor with her, laughing and joking and playing with her, and actually just tickling her because um, I just like to see her smile with all of her little teeth and everything. So if that's my favorite activity. These are the not so new mom 10 questions. I would love to see anybody else who would love to do this tag. I am actually going to tag uh, Audrey Tuka from Audrey Tuka, And I am going to tag Michelle from Blackness. Everdeen, I want you girls to go ahead and do this tag. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. And of course, I will have a playlist. If they do decide to do this tag, I will absolutely put up the playlist if they do. So definitely just check down in the description box below. I'm not certain if they're going to do it or not. But if they do, especially if you watch this video um, later than when it's posted, it might be a playlist. So just check it out. You never know. Just go ahead and check out those, those two channels and just see what they have to say. I will see you again tomorrow for day 16 of, wow, 100 day vlog challenge. It's been, it's been a struggle for me, but we're going to keep pushing through. I'll see you soon.